Benjamin, Georgie, leave it alone. It might have fleas. No, Amanda, what are they up to? Oh, they found another dead bird. I do wish the council would clean them up. Well, apparently they're saying it's a flu epidemic. And I gather they'll be closing the roads and stations, so they're worried enough for that. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, you don't mess about with the flu outbreak, I suppose. But look, I'm just saying, if you were planning on taking the kids to Wales, now might be the time to do it. Well, thanks, Barbara. I'll have a word with Neil, see what he thinks. Now, George, Benjamin, for God's sake, leave it alone! Meg, come and have a look at this. Oh, I don't believe it. Charlie! Jeremy reckons someone had been raiding all the empty houses. He said a load of stuff had been taken. What's that? Oh, it looks like someone's been collecting their own supplies. Bastard! Well, we've got enough stock in the warehouse to keep the entire village going for months. We should get a truck. What, and go and get all of it now? Yeah, why not? It's Appleton. It's that bloody crackpot Stephen Appleton. I'm gonna fucking do him. Sam, it's fine. We'd better get moving before the weather turns. You come in. We'll swing by the camp and get Rachel on the way back. Just have a word with them, perhaps. You know, they listen to you. Well, I really don't see what it has to do with me at all. The village looks up to you. I just think with what's been happening with Mr. Coles and Mrs. Boughton and the others, the people need somewhere to talk, to feel safe. Perhaps they don't think that your church is somewhere they feel particularly safe. I don't need your forgiveness, Wendy. Or theirs. Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. It's not my judgment you should be worried about, Father. But fine. I'll talk to Barbara. Ask her to put a note up in the surgery about an extra service. Will that do?
from the main road. Not many people are moving around now. I was looking for Dr. Wade. Listen, Frank. I don't know what's happened, but your Stephen seems to think he's responsible. <sighs> I reckon he is. He said, uh, Kate's still up at the observatory, but the gates are locked. Look, Frank, there's going to be a rescue soon, I'm sure of it. They'll send planes or something. Well, they'll send planes, all right. This pattern of his, we're in the center of it. Which means if they intend to stop it, we're right in the firing line.
ever so drawn this morning. That bloody dog kept me awake. And there was that thing in the sky. The radio says it was an electrical storm, but I don't know what it was. This morning, I found some dead birds in the garden. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder if it might have had something to do with the atmospheric conditions. Why, Stephen will probably know. I'll give him a call in a bit. Wendy, I've popped around because we've had some incidents with some of the more elderly residents. Mrs. Bout has, well, vanished, for want of a better word. Wandered off somewhere, no doubt. I thought I'd best check and see you're all right. The council are talking about a flu epidemic. Yes, well, I'm not sure it's flu as such. But uh, no headaches, nosebleeds, no joint pains or digestive issues. Dr. Wade, I'm as fit as a fiddle. Go and find some real sick people to look after. And if you see that son of mine, tell him that his mother's looking for him. 